the end of build-up at Chelsea 22, I take a look at some of the small gardens that caught my eye. We look at the BBC Radio 4's Gardener's Question Time exhibit and I chat to Cathy Cluxton, the chair. This is a magical retreat, isn't it? What I think is so clever about this is the way you've used the cork oak bark and you've clad the wood. Thank you very much. You know, I think it really creates this uh, space to have that right uh, material to use outside and just um, add a wee bit more interest as well. Yes, I was talking to the guy who supplied you with this cork Yes. Coat, and he said it comes in sheets, sort of, is it like one metre by two metres or something? Yes, but different sizes. Sizes, and you've cut it up and you've just pinned it or stuck it onto the wood. Yes, oh, it's, it's glued on yes. the top of the plywood and then we screw that so it, it, the glue will dry and yeah. then we can remove the, those um, screws and it will stay there. But yeah. obviously it needs the pressure as well when you do that. Right. And it's about 30 mil thick and he, he reckoned it would last 5 to 20 years outside. I, I honestly, I don't know for sure, but yeah. because it's from the tree, so I, and it's natural material, I would agree with him at that mm. it's a long lasting material. It's a biodiversity about as well and environmentally friendly material to be used. It's cork oak. I mean, obviously, you know, they strip the cork oak bark off yeah. annually yeah. or every few years, don't they? And uh, they use it for cork, for bathroom tiles, wine closures, everything. Yes, really. yes. yes, they do that. And that doesn't kill the oak. No. And that's the main thing for, for my respect as well. Yes, it just regenerates the bark every it, few years. Exactly, it? Yeah. exactly. No, I think it's a fabulous idea and I love the way you've planted it. You've got a glass roof above us, so it feels very light, <laughs> doesn't it? It's yes. nice. Yes, and, and it makes this a wee bit more interesting. And as this will be used like an office place or when this is relocated to hospital, it can be really... Be, place where you can relax and calm yourself yes. in, um, with your busy life. Yeah, and you're going to put some furniture in here? Or? No, no, we are not putting any more furniture because this is designed that way that uh, the people are with uh, uh, disabled people with a oh. wheelchair or so they can turn around. But these two small uh, chairs, we can move them. Right. So I right. wanted this to be feel spacious in mm. here as well mm. and very calming. It's a very Nordic or I would say maybe Finnish feeling inside. Very plain and simple but yeah. uh, still feeling that right oak feeling and forestry feeling. So Kate, you're one of my favourite designers, I think, because you're so ambitious. You always push the boundaries. You sponsor the gardens yourself. You mm -hmm. don't have any way of putting cash in. So you do it all. You organise it all. You design it all. And I, I don't know anyone else who does that. No, I think we're, well, I work with a band of um, lunatics who oh, also those enjoy are the lunatics. Those are the lunatics um, ah, who are who also enjoy what I do, what we do. So that's why we do it because we're addicts, Chelsea addicts. Oh uh, right, and I bet the lunatics decided they wanted a spa pool. I did suspect they? they did. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> for one reason only is the wash at the end of the week. <laughs> I think with yes, and have they been in it every day? No, no, no. This is literally just post judging. That's when they went in. Oh, it's kind of just judging. Just sort of you know oh, right. chill out, go in and. And what was the look on the judges' faces? Did you notice when they came round? Oh, they've got judge face on. So oh, it's very, face. very, very serious. Very, very judge face. Yeah, Nothing no, revealed. No, it's, uh, you know, and I, it's, I'm too terrified. I actually want to walk away. I don't want to be mm. here. That it's twirling nasty. sensation is nasty. Yeah. Very nasty. But this garden, I think, is clever, isn't it? Because you've got different levels. You've got uh, three different levels. Yep. Um, you've got the spa pool. Yep which I think many people would aspire to, wouldn't they? I think post, in a post-COVID world, absolutely. That's what people are looking to do. They're looking to make their gardens as safe as possible. And actually, you know, your mental health is better. Not, I mean, garden, we all know gardening is great for your mental health, but there's lots of other stuff as well. Yes. And that is, how deep is that? 1.3 metres. 1.3 metres. So it was quite fittable into people's oh, gardens. absolutely. And above ground. You can see you could yeah. do it above ground if you wanted to as well. What I like about it is most swimming pools look pretty horrendous mm -hmm. and they're sectioned off, but you've incorporated it and almost made it the focal point because it's a good looker. 
No, absolutely, and it was white. And actually, we thought that it would get so filthy on the showground because it does yeah. get very dirty here that we actually found somebody who would dip it black for us. And your brick wall is yeah. interesting, isn't it? So that's just mortared together, or just how mortared does... together? So yeah, Sam is in the jacuzzi. He's the guy who built it. Yes. Um, and we were mucking around with bricks in the office to work out what pattern we wanted. And actually, um, actually, they're the wrong bricks, but they've worked out really well. Yeah, and the pergola looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. So that they are partly really helping to hold up the wall because at yeah. the moment, you know, it's quite a lightweight structure. It's perfectly. Um, you know, Safe. Sound, I won't sound. lean against it though. No, but I, mean, I think you probably could, but the pergola's just there for a bit of added in case there's sort of a bit of you know push and shove on show days, which it always is. Yes. They'd be dying to see it. Be, yes. Yeah. So you've got a lovely fire bowl. Yep. You've got some gym equipment. Tell so, me about yeah. that. So uh, um, pull up bars. You yes. could use just do very simple pull up bars. You could do hanging and just a yoga mat. So it's a. It looks a bit like a gravestone. I'll admit that, but actually it fits a yoga mat perfectly, and there's room to kind of you know do your downward dog and just chill out. Yeah. Downward dog. I mm. bet you've been doing downward dog all week. Well, yeah, nose, nose down, bum up. Yeah. It's called planting. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So this is the water feature. Yes. So we've got a, a shower up at the back, and actually, the, just we made the water feature look like the shower. Ah. Um, but it is. It's got nothing to do with a pool. It's just. A, it's just a water feature and Lovely. some sort of metal discs as detailing. Great. No, I think it's a triumph. Um, I hope you do really well. Thank you very much. And Thank you I for being feel kind. really inspired to get a spa pool now. There you go. <laughs> This is your amazing, it's a container garden. Yes. Yeah. And you both work in Mallorca. Yes. And this is the sort of thing that you do for many of your clients, presumably. Yes, so it's the inspiration was taken from the Mallorcan landscape. And uh, we do garden design, but we also do terrace design as well. So um, this would definitely be fitting for a courtyard garden. Um, and we have, you know, it's basically representing the different layers of the Mallorcan landscape. So the blue sea, the stone cliffs, and the color of the soil, terra rosa. So I love your arbutus trees. You've got two multi-stem arbutus trees. Yes. yes. And, and these will grow in England quite happily, won't they? You don't often see them, though. No, they're lovely, aren't they? Mm. This, is, this is an arbutus andrechnoides. So it's just not the regular one. So if you look at the, the trunk of the tree, it's quite special, isn't it? It's very special. Red stem yeah. and, and I love your wall at the back, your rendered wall. So that's just a concrete block wall. And then you've rendered it with a very textural render. Yes, it's all handmade. It's lovely, isn't it, for the texture. So it's like a weathered stone wall. So it's an, our interpretation of a uh, stone wall, you know, a cliff. Uh, in Mallorca. So, right. Yes. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. And the talk pots uh, made for you specially by talk? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And are you happy with the colour now? Yeah, we love it. Yeah, oh, good. It yes. is nice, isn't it? I think it, it just shrieks out Mallorca to me. I don't, it must be psychosomatic, mustn't it? But it does seem to be quite Mallorcan. Um, and I think the icing on the cake is this bench, isn't it? Um, you designed this bench. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we designed the bench in collaboration with Studio Merico. Yes. Yes. Marico. Yes. yes. And uh, it's granite, obviously, with a reclaimed oak top. And mm. it's done in such a way, I think it's extremely simple in form, but very effective. And the detailing, for example, the way that this uh, top piece of granite is cut into the bench is exquisite. So we are very pleased. So on that, you cut the wood into the granite, presumably, not the other way around. Yes, the yeah. wood. The wood top was yeah. actually was carved out in order for this piece to sit yeah. set into. No, it's beautiful and it's just structurally sound without any fittings. Yeah. Fixings. It has a special structure on the inside. So I'm with Kathy Cluxon. Kathy Cluxon is the world renowned famous <laughs> chairman of Gardeners Question Time. You took over how long ago, Kathy? Three years now. Um, took over from the great Eric Robson, who was 25 years in the chair, so it was wow. no, no small um, task, but it's been such a joy to do ever since. Oh, you're very good. We love you, Kathy. We love you. So, and it's 75 years of Gardeners isn't Question it, Time. Isn't it extraordinary? And so they're doing an exhibit this year because of the 75 years, yeah. as is the Queen 75 years. Indeed. Of 
of Gardener's Christian Time. So behind us, yeah. can you explain what's behind us? Well, we've got this amazing plot at Chelsea. It's the first time it's ever happened, which um, is just extraordinary. A lot of hard work has gone into that, I think, getting this plot. So it's an exhibition garden. It's not being judged. It's for people to come and experience GQT here at Chelsea. So we've got this lovely sort of shed slash greenhouse, which is full of artefacts from the last 75 years, um, bits of memorabilia, old tools, old radios, um, some of the books that our panellists have produced. So people can have a little look at that. Then they can wander through the garden, be inspired by the beautiful planting, and then meet you know, meet our panellists. Mm. So shall we have a wander through and Let's. look at the beds we've done? Yeah. The idea behind the planting in the garden is to really reflect the questions that we get um, on Gardener's Question Time and also to just have plants that people know and enjoy and are easy to get hold of. But this particular area must be one of our... Well, we've got the hostess here representing one of our most common questions about slugs and snails. I don't know how many times, Bunny, you've had to answer that Hundreds. question. <laughs> so we've got some hostess as yet uneaten. We'll see how they, how they go during yes. the week. And ferns, which, you know, again, are great, um, always pop up in the programme as suggestions for shady areas. Difficult corners. Difficult corners, yeah. exactly. And yeah. we've got some lovely GMs here which again I've got in my garden, you know, very accessible, but they're beautiful and the colour contrast with the purple is just stunning, I think. Yeah, it looks good. And then we've got a balcony over there yeah, well, to represent balcony planting. Yes, I mean, this is one of the great things I think in the last few years is that um, since the pandemic, when suddenly everyone realised not everyone has a garden and people want to get into planting and flowers and and grow your own and so the acknowledgement I think has come that people have very can work in very small spaces but can grow all sorts of things so lots of questions we get now in the program are about pots or about small courtyards balconies windowsills and house plants this is a rose bed I think roses must be the most questioned plant do you Certainly think on the one show of them, yeah I don't know, it seems less lately. I don't know if other maybe flowers are taking over, but it's certainly a perennial favourite, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, and it does have one or two problems occasionally. Yes, <laughs> yes. indeed. So we've got these roses here from David Austin, and um, they've got some um, two purples, a white, and then we've got the climber in the middle. Um, and then we've... about this, buddy, because this was not without incident, this, <laughs> yes, <laughs> this structure. This, this. So it, we, we didn't quite know what to do because the floor came up in this bed, and so we only have a little bit of planting plan. So to give it a planting depth so to give it some height I cut down some hazel twigs from my wood last night and brought them down in the car with them in my back all the way down and but it just gives it a bit of height it doesn't brilliant. it yeah and we often say if you want a lift a border and give it a bit of height a wigwam or obelisk is a very simple way to do it this is a great example of the yeah just three different heights and it's just visually mm. it has a great impact yeah so this bed Cathy this is your <laughs> bed I'm told that's terrible I mean I did a tiny little bit but it's our grow your own veg patch obviously we get so many questions about growing veg I mean these veg we really beg borrowed and stole from from the Chelsea exhibitors because of course the people actually showing their vegetables are so many that maybe don't quite fit or have gone a little bit off or have got a few leaves falling off and so they, they gave them to us so we were able to plant them here we've got this stunning veg patch so again we hope it will be inspirational for, for listeners who come to have a look so this is the GQT camper van on site. This is the place where panellists like you, Bunny, will be inside boiling hot. <laughs> while listeners can come and actually put their questions to you in person, which is amazing. Ah, it's fun. It's lovely meeting the audience. And, and hopefully they won't give me too many very difficult questions. But Paul, you look like you're twiddling your knobs. <laughs> is, is it all working? Are you going to give us... I bet your sound is better than mine. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah, Paul's always on our uh, shows, a fantastic technician. So, yeah, we're getting all set up for, you know, press day tomorrow, then the audience come on Tuesday, and there'll be a line, hopefully, of listeners waiting to, to ask their questions. And they, if they're lucky, if they ask some good ones, they, they'll end up in an in a edition of GQT on oh, Radio 4. Most exciting. Oh.